Hello, welcome to the Object Oriented Programming Practicum course. I am Stephen Hustady and I will be your instructor and guide on this fascinating journey of learning to program, code, and develop software. I've been a professor at South Mountain Community College in Phoenix, Arizona for the past 34 years. And the very first course I taught in January 1990 was called Programming Theory. Back then we used GW Basic on an IBM PC DOS computer. And that course is at the root of this course. Obviously, computers and digital devices have evolved significantly from 1990 to 2024. And programming languages with coding trends and techniques have changed to keep up. In 1990, GW Basic was old school procedural language. But for the past 25 years, I've taught programming fundamentals with object-oriented languages, including C++, Visual Basic, C Sharp, Swift, and Python. I've also taught the course using GUI tools and scripting languages such as HyperCard's HyperTalk, OpenScript and Asymmetrics Toolbook, and ActionScript with Adobe Flash. I developed beginning and advanced courses in most of those languages. And I taught Android and iOS and cross-platform mobile development and written a programming theory textbook used at numerous institutions, including Harvard. There are a few languages and programming environments that I think lend themselves best to wanting to learn to code and create software with no prior experience. Visual Basic is one of those. And while I've been teaching this content with Python for the past five years, I'm excited to return to Visual Basic. The language syntax is a bit easier and most of my students find it more fun and rewarding to learn GUI or graphical user interface development from the outset. I hope you too will enjoy the adventure of learning object-oriented programming. There are two pathways of learning object-oriented programming. Some professors favor an early objects approach, starting you, the student, creating custom classes very early in the course. Author Tony Gaddis recognizes this and wrote a Java book for early objects. But he also has a book that flows for those instructors who are fans of the late objects path. While using objects from day one in the late objects methodology, there is a delay in the creation of custom classes until the student has learned the foundational actions of working with variables, conditional structures, repetition loops, and data structures such as arrays and lists before learning to create custom classes. I am a late objects professor. I believe the easiest path to mastery is to learn the fundamentals of traditional procedural programming before incorporating those techniques into defining custom objects. But rest assured, everything we create along the way is object-based. One doesn't learn to play the piano by just sitting in a lecture and, and demonstrations or watching videos. And while those can be helpful, the bottom line is you must put your fingers on the keyboard. The same goes for any skill or craft, whether it be painting landscapes or portraits, spinning a ceramic bowl or vase, or becoming a master woodworker. Along the way, there are bound to be some discouraging sour notes, a distorted portrait, a wobbly bowl, or a throwaway wooden piece. Part of mastering a new skill is lots of hands-on practice and patiently learning from mistakes. To best learn in this video series or in my face-to-face -face classes is to code. While you follow along with me, replicate what I do on your PC. Research shows we remember far more what we do than what we just see or read. So like the budding piano student, put your fingers on the keyboard and play. I've titled this series Object Oriented Pro Programming Practicum. Brian Webster's defines practicum as a course of study designed especially for the preparation of teachers and clinicians that involves the supervised practical application of previously studied theory. My approach is to explain the theory behind the coding and give you many hands-on projects for you to create or replicate. This is the practical application. And while I may not be present to supervise, I will provide you my solution to the projects. In industry, we do code reviews where we walk our team or supervisors through our code, explaining it line by line. I like teaching using an apprenticeship model where I will walk you through my code. You're welcome to copy my code, but I strongly recommend that to best learn, try to do the project on your own first, and then either compare your solution to mine or use mine if you get stuck. In the syllabus, you'll see that I view coding like a fingerprint. Coding is like a fingerprint. Everyone thinks differently. There are numerous ways to approach and code a problem, and thus one's coding style will be unique and distinct. Granted, programming styles and algorithm development changes over time as you learn more and more, but no two people will write code that is the same. In fact, if I write a program one week and then solve the same problem a week later, it would likely result in a slightly different program, and in some cases, a very different approach. Now, there's no one correct solution, though one solution may be more efficient than another. You will likely establish your own approaches and program flows that are uniquely you. The bottom line is, does your application work? And one solution may be more efficient than another, or more readable, or more elegant, 
but the important thing is that the application achieves what it's supposed to do. My goal is to get you to code efficiently and make your code more readable. But learning to code is a process, and sometimes we must do things the hard way or less effective way until we learn more. Just like playing the piano, one masters musical notes and plays Twinkle Twinkle Little Star long before they can play Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Oftentimes, the most elegant or efficient is not the simplest code. Let's start with the simple and progress from there. That is why I favor the late objects approach to mastering program. In the next video, I will address the advantages of learning to code and develop software regardless of your career or educational path. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the Programming Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.